y'all have been wandering. Anthony Fantano, how do I find you on Twitter? I, I just don't know. Do, do I? Uh... Easy answer. Just look up the word meme. I pop right the fuck up. The word melon, too. Hi, everyone. Carthony, Carthony C. C. Tano, Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Car Seat Headrest record, Teens of Denial. Car Seat Headrest is the musical project masterminded by singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Mr. Will Toledo, quickly following up his Matador Records debut last year, a Teens of Style. And I'm kind of thinking, is this like a sister album of some sort? Teens of Style, Teens of Denial. But this new album here seems like a really big change of pace if these albums are related in some kind of conceptual way. Uh, it's, it's not very obvious on the surface because this new record over here seems like such a jump up in ambition, right from the album, which is an hour and 11 minutes long across 12 tracks. And my issue with that potentially is, are these track lengths justified? Uh, I thought some of the songwriting on the last record was kind of lackluster, and I can imagine some of those really forgettable songs stretched out to like 10 or 11 minutes and me just not enjoying them at all. Plus, I was kind of wondering if on their next record, Car Seat Headrest would really kind of come into their own because uh, Will Toledo, for a while now, has very boldly been wearing his influences on his sleeve in his music to the point where he drowns in his influences occasionally this album, going into it, I thought this could either be a really overly long patience testing record that I'm gonna hate, or the ambitious kick this project needed to keep fans engaged. Now the sound and the recording here is still kind of lo-fi. Will is keeping it very close to that bedroom pop and rock aesthetic, but this album is noticeably punchier than Teens of Style. The mixes here seem a little more instrumentally dense too, with pianos and background vocals and occasional shots of strings or like some horns being added to the bass rock instrumentation. And these extra bits of sound elevate the brittle guitars and the really clipping sort of fuzzed out vocals really nicely. The singing is still delivered in this slow, lazy kind of drawled affectation. And it's the kind of thing I think listeners are either gonna love or just totally hate. Not only because the vocals on this record just sound so akin to like Julian Casablancas on any given stroke song, but also because it does slightly feel like a, a put on. However, Will Toledo does break out of this vocal delivery occasionally on this album to go into his upper register and deliver some crack passionate, almost manic singing. I am, I am noticing on this record that Will is making a bigger effort to deliver some very direct lyrics. Sort of like on the song Joe Gets Kicked Out of School, buh, 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 which is a kind of funny and also sad piece of storytelling from Will where he is going through what seems like a really bad high. He's paranoid of the police outside. He's paranoid of his friends inside. Occasionally on the record, I think the mix is a little aggravating. It's almost like the polar opposite issue of what I had with uh, Teens of Style, where a lot of the time the vocals were kind of muffled and thrown into the background. It just didn't really have that much presence. Here, the vocals really muscle out the instrumentation a lot of the time, which kind of just fights chaotically in the background. The foundation of the instrumentation is a little quieter than I would like it sometimes, except for in the case of the song Vincent, where for a, a great deal of the track, there is this horrid uh, two-note guitar line that just just roaring over this kind of funky rock instrumentation. Hmm, sounds great. It's like I'm listening to a $200 guitar alternating between open E and open A with the cheapest sort of built-in distortion that comes out of whatever secondhand amp that it's being played out of. And I don't know if I mean that yet in the worst way or the best way possible, because I actually do like the song here quite a bit, and it seems like there's a lot of instrumental chemistry on this record too, and I enjoy a lot of Will's lyrics on this cut. Pusatism! The refrains are great, and this song I think is one of many moments on the record where I think Will's songwriting has definitely upped itself a notch. The structures on these tracks are more ambitious, the instrumental breaks and interludes, outros, intros, 
uh, bridges are better. There are actually some super memorable choruses on this record, from the noisy and kind of tension-building jam at the end of Connect the Dots, to the very awesome and syncopated guitar and drum hits on the intro track, fill in the blank. This album seems so much more focused. And again, that comes through in the very straightforward lyrics. Right from the beginning of the album, we get this strong narrative of Will being angry at people and the world in general, kind of invalidating his feelings. Then we have all these kind of drug narratives coming through on songs like uh, Destroyed by Hippie Powers, as well as Drunk Driving, which is not only a track about just drunk driving being a bad idea, but the feelings of depression and emptiness that sort of led Will to this point. The song Just What I Needed, another track that I really like on the record, uh, from what I've read, was actually supposed to incorporate the Cars song of the same title. However, uh, he had to rewrite the song, Will did, because the track didn't get cleared, and then a bunch of vinyl records that actually had the song printed on it were destroyed. But you can still kind of hear the influence of the Cars song in the very steady, mid-paced, rhythm guitars on the verses. I like the weary vocal delivery on this track, which seems very earnest, and the funny and smart lyrics on this track, too, uh, about waiting for <laughs> some good porn. Feelings of emptiness and the whole idea of taking advice, uh, though the advice that he is talking about in this track just seems uh, kind of generic and just not really all that helpful, which I think might have been the point of the track. On 1937 State Park, we see an unhinged Will Toledo, where uh, he tells a story about being taken down by the cops, crying on his way home, bottling up all this pain and hiding it from someone because he says his pain is his own and I guess he just uh, won't let it go. And the only major issue I have with this record lyrically is probably on the song um, Unforgiving Girl, where the last portion of the uh, track is dominated by this refrain of it's an unforgiving world, but she's not an unforgiving girl. <laughs> but then, in a way, Will kind of makes up for it on the song Cosmic Hero with these really heavy one-liners that uh, actually kind of make you think how sad life is. Where if you want X, it comes at the price of Y. The song also builds into a monstrous instrumental ending that I like a lot. We also have toward the back end of this album the 11-minute monster, the Ballad of Costa Concordia, which is this very slow, pained ballad with another big ending where Will kind of delivers these very confessional spoken word vocals where he essentially admits to just not knowing how to navigate life. Not because he's a totally useless person or anything like that, but uh, he's just dealing with a lot of these struggles and issues of just kind of figuring out how to be a mature, functioning adult in those late teens and early 20s. And it's almost like at the end of this song and with the following track too, he comes to this conclusion of, I just give up and I'm never getting a job. You can agree or disagree with the philosophy of the record, but it's sort of interesting from the beginning to the end of the album, we kind of see this emotional metamorphosis of Will. We see him move from being worried and neurotic and depressed and feeling empty to this guy who has essentially just dropped all of these hangups. We have a very serene closing track on the record to sort of end things off on a positive and easygoing note, but that's pretty much the end of the album. However, uh, this hopefully is not the end of Will Toledo, and his story will continue on to the next record, and hopefully it's as interesting to listen to, as well-written, as passionately delivered, and as uh, musically engaging as this record over here. I'm feeling a decent strong eight on this album. Tran? Zition! Have you given this Carson headrest record a listen. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like. If you like, please subscribe. Please don't die. Watch more videos. Share them with your mom. <whistles> Hope you enjoyed this record. Carsey Headrest, Teens of Denial Forever.